again everyone and welcome back to reddit aliens i'm john and as always thank you so much for being here a good topic let's do it what thing that you didn't think could happen happened to you please remember to like share and subscribe a car crashed through my kitchen last year a snake fell out of a tree and bit me on the head eta I've always been more scared of snakes than anyone I know, so it's just so ironic that this happened to me of all people. My brother-in-law had a psychotic break after going off his medication, which he hid from us, and killed my sleeping father than himself. Perfectly normal the night before. We were laughing and talking and he asked if I would make a certain meal for dinner the next day. Eight hours later, our family was shattered. Everyone else's stories are very sad, so here's something a bit lighter. I've mentioned this story before, but I got bitten on the neck by a penguin. I was at an event where the local zoo had a penguin and an owl sitting on tables with handlers so you could take a picture next to them. The penguin went for my glass of wine. I moved the wine, and it bit me on the neck hard enough to bruise. They removed the penguin after that. My wife cheated on me with my best friend. They're moving in together next month. I'm in a new city thousands of miles away. I found out a month ago. My dad killed himself when I was 13. Left my mom widowed at 41 with two kids. He was meant to drive up to meet us at his sister's holiday house and instead he went off and offed himself. He had just gone on a new depression medication that these days, when you start it, you're not meant to be left alone for the initial two weeks because it can get much worse before it gets better. So that's pretty dumb. My darling husband, the love of my life, got prostate cancer at age 52 and died a terrible, painful death from it at age 54. He was my everything, my knight in slightly tarnished armor, the beautiful man who made all my dreams come true. I honestly don't know how I've survived it this far. Wife went to check on our month old while he was sleeping. He had stopped breathing sometime in the previous hour. Doctors couldn't save him. Was labeled a SIDS death. Being in a DV relationship, I always told myself I could never be so stupid to stay with someone who hurt me. Not calling any victims stupid, I just thought I would do better by me. Recognize it would only get worse and not wait for it to get there. Our house burned in a wildfire. We lost absolutely everything we owned and only salvaged a single coffee cup. On the good side, there was a boy I crushed on all through high school. We went to summer camp together and I adored him. We ended up getting together in our 20s after reconnecting and have now been together for more than 20 years. Married almost 17. We're as madly in love as ever. My six-month pregnant, 23-year-old cousin who was practically my best and only friend growing up was brutally murdered right outside her house. I, a young male at the age of 17, developed a type of cancer that normally affects women 50 years or older, anaplastic carcinoma, a very fast and aggressive type of thyroid cancer. When the span of a few weeks it grew from the size of a pea to the size of a walnut. Both of my cars were stolen. My car first, but they also had the keys to our house, and we were scared, so we were staying with my wife's parents for a few weeks. We came back to get some clothes, and in the five minutes we were there, they stole her car. My husband of 27 years hooked up with a married woman from our small town before informing either of their spouses that our marriages were over. This was a man who was very big on emotional intelligence, being honest, and scathing about other folks cheating. Homelessness. It came swiftly and out of nowhere. Had no savings and landlord sold the house I was in. Couldn't afford a new place, so lived in my car with my dog for a few months. Ended up finding community assistance and got into an apartment. About 10 years ago, I was stabbed in the arm with a flathead screwdriver. It was a co-worker who I had previously gotten along well with. He had stopped taking benzos and smoking weed a few days before and was on a hair trigger. I said something sarcastic, and he just snapped. When I got diagnosed with an aggressive cancer last year, an oncology nurse told me, you're going to find out how strong you are. Nobody ever wants to hear those words. Blessings to all of you here. 
My father completely abandoned me and blocked my number when I asked him to help me leave an abusive marriage. He is an attorney. We spoke every day in my entire life, all 33 years. He was my hero. Broke me. Gave authorization to have my mom's life support removed. Still very effed up from it since. We were very close. That shit haunts you. I got pulled over three different times in the same day by the same cop in three different cars. I was always the driver for my friend group, so when I got pulled for expired tags, my friend let me borrow his car. The same cop, waiting at the same spot, kept finding reasons to pull me. I mean, assuming you weren't breaking that many traffic laws, the chances of being pulled over by the same police officer in the same day in multiple cars it has to be in the billions. Why can't we just win the lottery instead? Weird. I slipped on easy terrain on the third pitch of a climb, fell 10 to 15 feet onto a ledge, and severely broke my ankle. I was the more experienced between myself and my partner, and was in no shape to do multiple rappels down low angle terrain. Thankfully we had cell service. The sheriff's office came and picked us up off the wall from a helicopter. Never thought I'd be that guy getting rescued. Turns out I had a pylon fracture of my left ankle. This was like two weeks ago. I'm getting my final surgery to fit it tomorrow and then the long road to recovery. After seeing people intubated on a ventilator as a nurse, I thought I would never want to live through something like that. Not only did I end up on a vent, but I was on the wide awake with no sedation because I went into hypervolmic shock. They had to discontinue my sedative because my blood pressure dropped too low. Here I am today. I survived, I'm healthy, and I'm thankful for ventilators. The neighbor's house on my side of my childhood burned down from a lightning strike. Within a few years, the neighbors on the other side also got struck by lightning and burned down. Getting roofied. I was planning on flying home for a break in college. I did the research, found the best flight, and then wrote down the info. My mom had a dream and decided she needed to move down to where I was. I never booked the flight. It crashed. Obligatory not me but my mom. She had a golf ball sized tumor that was biopsied and found to be brain cancer. It was growing the wrong way. It usually grows in toward your brain stem and hers was growing out into her NASA phalanx instead. The hospital told her this occurrence of brain cancer, but not in the brain, had only been documented by about a hundred people. She's fine because it was in her nasopharynx. They were able to remove it with surgery and aside from needing to get scans annually, everything is good. About three months ago, I started getting a deluge of harm intrusive thoughts. It was unbelievably scary to start. People with OCD deal with intrusive thoughts and these ones are terrifying. I hope none of you ever have to experience it. Conceived a very wanted son who had Down syndrome, anencephaly, and a congenital heart defect, decided with my husband to terminate because he would not survive being born, only to find out after the surgery that he had already died in utero. I'm still haunted. Mental illness. I grew up with people around me who whispered and giggled about crazy people. I failed to see my own mental illness developing till I was in my 30s. At first, I didn't think I needed intervention, so it got worse and worse over the next 10 years till I deemed myself unfixable. Despite my self-given prognosis, I decided to see a therapist. I gave him a huge list of what was wrong with me. I don't know what I expected him to do with that info other than throw me into a garbage can. He helped me out of that hole, got me into a psychiatrist, and that, combined with therapy, has worked wonders. I still deal with the illness, but I have many, many more tools available to cope with it when these things start to go south. Type 1 Diabetes I started feeling extreme fatigue and always got too sleepy after eating, about an hour or two after eating. I was working in 40 degrees Celsius kitchen, so I didn't really clock that drinking 6 liters of water in a day is a little much. I was peeing like every half hour, and every time it felt like it was an emergency. 
I started Googling and signs pointed to T1D. I have no family history of diabetes, not type 1, gestational, type 2, nada. So I did what any logical person would do and Googled thirsty urinating a lot, not diabetes. Joke's on me. Went to the doctor, girlfriend dragged me there after I called out of work, which is not my nature. And they told me that I have an ape game that was a little high. The nurse who told me my BG had that voice though. The one where she was trying to hide the uneasiness of it all. The doctor sent me to the hospital with a sheet of paper with the BG results. They admitted me within 10 minutes, which definitely concerned my girlfriend. It's usually a 2-3 to three hour wait on a really slow day. Hmm? Wife and I lived very frugally for 5 years, saving most months 60% of income in age call. A few years ago, she got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease that destroyed her smile. Dental only covered so much, and after that all our savings were wiped out. At first, 40k, then another 10, then 3k here and there. Every time we saved up and got a little back, it kept coming. This was over a short year and a half or so. Next month, insurance kicks back in, and I have a new job, so she will have two plans now. Never able to get ahead. I got catfished once. I was in a very vulnerable and lonely state after suffering three significant losses. Luckily, there was zero money involved. I'd like to think that I would be smart enough not to have sent any money, but now that I've experienced the rush that can happen can blind you. I no longer judge people who have been catfished. Most of them were probably just really, really lonely. PTSD from a car accident. I feel stupid to even call it PTSD because it's so minor, but I had a high impact car accident and now I get vivid flashbacks to the moment of impact when I am exposed to certain subjects or sounds. I can even smell the smoke and acrid taste in my mouth. Anyway, I now understand what it feels like when people say they've been triggered by certain things. It's an unpleasant feeling. I had a psychotic break after being a mental health professional for most of my life. I flushed my life down the toilet all within the course of a month, lost my job, lost my kids, my marriage, three restraining orders, and two felony arrests. All of it was out of character and unprecedented. It was really the last thing I expected. I was really disillusioned as a kid about love for some reason. I thought it wasn't real and that all relationships were doomed eventually. Then I started to have feelings for my friend. We decided to be boyfriend and girlfriend. It was 8th grade. I was pretty sure it would be a long relationship, but it could only last like 6 months at most because 8th graders don't stay together. But he was my best friend, so we did stay together. I kept thinking eventually the fun would wear off and we'd get sick of each other or annoyed because that's what I kept seeing in other relationships, but it just never happened. We've almost been married 10 years now, together for nearly 20. It's crazy to think it worked out so well for us because we know how incredibly rare it is to find someone compatible at such a young age and then both grow in the same direction. Came home from walking the dog to find my boyfriend had shot himself to death while I was gone. It was actually a few hours before I found him. The dog kept going up the stairs and then back down to check on me. Finally, I went up to the bedroom and saw his hand sticking out of the closet. There was almost a decade ago, and I still haven't gotten over it. When I was in college, a childhood friend who was starting her freshman year in Austin was followed by a homeless man killed and her body was left in a river. I think there was some kind of SA in there, but it honestly makes me sick to even think about, and I don't want to know. I remember when my mom called me to tell me she had been missing a couple of days and the police found a body and her family was going to identify it and my mom said it was most likely her. I couldn't even process what was happening. Went into my class totally fine, hit me in the middle of a physics lesson. I started bawling and had to leave. Of course, this didn't happen to me. It happened to a friend who at this point was quite distanced from me. But I still can't believe this happened. It was absolutely horrible. 
and I think about her siblings and parents all the time.